Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share with you a table runner tutorial. I actually shared this nine patch table runner a couple of times already, once in a table runner video that we did, and another one in my mini charm pack project video. And we asked the question on the mini charm pack video, would you like to see a tutorial? And several of you said yes, so here we are with a tutorial for this fun runner. You can use a mini charm pack to make your nine patch units, or you can use two and a half inch strips. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how to make it. I'm making mine today using our Balboa fabric collection. And let's get started. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our nine patch table runner. I decided to make the small version for this tutorial. And I'm going to do three different nine patch blocks with a combination of light and the grayish taupe in three different prints. So I'm going to do a nine patch block out of these two fabrics, a nine patch block out of these two fabrics, and then a nine patch block out of these two fabrics. And then I decided to use this large floral print on cream for my setting triangles. I'm going to use this fabric for my border, and I'm going to use this fabric for my binding. So let me just get started and show you what you need to cut. First, you'll need to either cut two and a half inch by two and a half inch squares or strips, whatever your favorite method is, and you're going to make nine patch blocks. So I've got my blocks already made. And you can make them with a combination of lights and darks, or you can make them all scrappy. You could use nine different fabrics if you would like for this block. I wanted to have a more coordinated look for this table runner, so I did the two, two fabrics in each of my nine patches. The next thing you're going to need is two 10 inch squares for your setting triangles. And you're going to need also two five and a quarter inch by five and a quarter inch squares for the corner triangles. Next, I'll show you what to cut from these fabrics so that you'll be able to put everything all together. Okay, and this fabric, as I mentioned before, this is for my binding and this is for my border. I cut two and a half inch strips for my border, three of them, and I cut three two and a quarter inch by width of fabric strips for the binding. But the first thing we're gonna do with it is cut our 10 inch squares so we have that ready for our, our side setting triangles. And I'm going to line up these two squares exactly on top of each other, and we're going to cut them on the diagonal twice. And actually, I think I'm going to get a rotating cutting mat because it makes it much easier so that the fabrics don't have to move. Okay, so I'm going to place the, the fabric squares on the rotating cutting mat. That way, I can just rotate them more easily. So to cut twice diagonally, you're going to take a long ruler and line it up with the points on either end. Make the first cut. And then without moving the fabric, we're going to rotate the mat. And if you don't have a rotating money cutting mat, you can just go stand on the other side of the table to do this. Uh, line it up again. And make our second cut. So that gives us eight side setting triangles. I like to handle them very carefully so the bias um, isn't stretched in any way. And we're actually only gonna need six of these if you're making the small table runner. If you're making the large table runner, then you will need all eight of them. And then we're also going to cut the corner setting triangles in the same way, but these only need to be cut once on the diagonal. So these are the five and a quarter inch by five and a quarter inch squares. 
We're going to do the same thing. Okay, so that will give us our four corner triangles. You might notice that these fabrics, uh, they have a little bit more body to them. A friend of mine actually made a project with this for me and she starched all of the fabrics before sewing. So these fabrics have been starched and they do have a little bit of extra body, which I'm really loving for this project. Okay, so everything's cut out. You cut out your two and a half inch squares. You will need uh, 27 of them if you're making the small runner. Sew them together in three nine patches. And then cut out your corner and your side setting triangles. And then I've got the border and the binding ready to go for later. Okay, next, I really like to just lay out my blocks all before I start sewing them together, just so that I don't make any mistakes in putting anything together. And what I decided was to put my nine patch with the flowers in the center, since that's the same fabric that I'm gonna use for my border. And then I'm just gonna start setting out these triangles And actually, I think I told you you'd need six for the small runner and eight for the large. It's six if you're using four nine patch blocks. This pattern is so versatile, you can make it whatever length you need. But I am just gonna use these four because I'm just using three blocks for a small runner. And then these smaller triangles that we cut will make up our ends. Okay, one thing to remember about this is that we are going to sew on these four corner triangles at the very end. So the first thing we're going to sew together is what I like to call our rows. So row one will be this nine patch and this side corner. Row two will be the center nine patch with two side triangles. And row three will be the final nine patch with a side triangle. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew row one, row two, and row three together, and then come back. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine, and you can see that I've sewn row one together, row two or the center row together, and row three together. And I did press everything towards the triangles. So press the seams toward the triangles. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to sew row one to row two and row two to row three. So we're still not gonna add these. They are gonna be the very last thing that we add. So I'm just gonna flip this over and since I pressed both of these seams toward the triangles, those seams will just kind of nest together and I'll sew this together, and then I'll come back and sew this, and then I'll come back and show you. We will then be ready to add the outer corners. Okay, rows are sewn together. It's starting to look like a table runner. I press um, towards the seams toward the outer rows, so away from the center row. And now we're going to add these. You'll notice that you're going to need to add one at a time. So you're gonna need to add this one, press it, and then come back and add this one and press it. And the same thing over here. So what I generally do is I will get two of the opposite ones ready and stick a pin in them, take them to the machine, press, and come back and then sew the final ones on. And what you'll notice is on these corners, you want this point to extend just a little bit past the end of the nine patch here and just a little bit past that. And the same thing over here, you can see that my triangle is going to extend about a quarter of an inch past on each end. So I'm just gonna stick just one pin that'll hold it together while I take it to the machine. And I'll go press those, I'll go sew those and press them, and then I'll be ready to add the final two corners, sew and press, and then we can start working on our, our border. 
Okay, I've got everything added and pressed. With three blocks, my runner right now is about 25 and a half inches. So this is, I had actually measured a table before I started and knew kind of the size I wanted to make. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to trim because we have quite a bit more than a quarter of an inch here. So we're gonna trim each of the four sides so that we have that we do have a quarter of an inch left over so that we don't cut off these points but that we don't have a ton extra and i'm going to use my ruler i'm going to actually align it on the top and on the side so that i make sure it's square and i've actually even i'm kind of looking i've got this line right here i'm going to make sure it's as straight as I can get it. Sometimes with things set on point, you're not going to be able to get it perfectly straight, but you can get it as good as you can. And the most important thing is to make sure that these points aren't going to get cut off. So I'm going to trim. And it's just sometimes a sliver. but it will make a big difference. I'm actually going to trim this other short end before I do the final long end. wasn't very much there and now we'll just do the final long end Okay, so now our runner is a nice rectangular shape and we are ready to add the border fabric. And I mentioned before I'm going to use this floral that I used in the center. And I am going to add the long edges first and then the short edges. It really doesn't matter with this. And so what I like to do is I like to stack up both of these pieces. I don't want there to be a seam, and so I'm going to use two width of fabric strips to cut that. I'm going to measure my runner, and it's right at 25 and 5 eighths. I always flip it over to make sure the other side is the same, and it is. So I'm going to... And you can see some of this too. I have a video on how to add borders where I kind of walk you through this step. But I'm going to trim the edges to match. And then I'm going to actually, instead of cutting this at 25 and 5 eighths, I'm going to stick a pin in both of these at 25 and 5 eighths. Just really helps with accuracy. I'm going to um, kind of line my ruler up so I can see exactly where to stick my pin. And I'm going to stick one in both border pieces. And then what I like to do is line up the pin with one end and I'll probably just use like three pins per side. This isn't very big so I'm not feeling like I need a ton of pins. 
and I'm going to pin the other border on in the same way. And then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I will press out toward my border fabric. And then I will come back and trim those ends off before adding the remaining two border strips. Okay, so I'm going to go sew and press and be right back. Okay, I've added the two borders. And again, I pressed out toward the border fabrics. I'm going to trim a couple threads there. And now I'm going to just trim these edges straight before adding the end borders. Okay, and so now I'm going to just do the same thing while I add these other two borders. I'm going to measure both sides. Mine are right at 13 inches for both of them. And I actually ended up having enough left over here. I won't actually need to use my third strip so I can I can cut the two 13 inch sections from this and I'm just going to do the same kind of pin method. I really like that method. Trim up the edge and then we're going to measure 13 inches and stick a pin in it. I, you know, sometimes with these on point diagonal set projects, your measurements might come out slightly different, and that's okay. Just be sure to measure your own project. Um, so then we'll do the same little technique. And I will just put two pins, and well, I'll go ahead and put three. And then the other end. Okay, I'll head over, I'll sew and press, and come back and show you the finished top of our table runner. Okay, back from the sewing machine again. I'm just going to trim once again like I did for the other ends. Just make sure everything's straight at the top and I usually try to line it up with a seam. Okay, so there we have our runner. I love how it turned out. As I mentioned, I'm going to use this little tiny gray sun print for the binding. I cut it at two and a fourth. I, I might trim it down to two inches. I'll see what I think after it gets quilted. My finished runner with the three blocks and the two and a half inch border is about 29 and a half inches long and you know, the 13 inches wide, just the perfect size for the little table that I want to put it on. And you can make it bigger or smaller. I'll give you some more information on this in the closing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this table runner. I can't wait to get mine quilted and bound and use it downstairs in my kitchen. It's, it's going to be a great addition. I want you to know also that there is a PDF for this that has everything written down and it has some measurements for the squares that you need to cut and for two different sizes 
the small and the larger one, which I actually don't have pictured here. These are two versions of the three block quilt, but you can actually use as many nine patches as you would like to make it however long you want. I hope you'll enjoy making this. And if you enjoyed this video, please share with a friend and hit the subscribe button and the like button. Thanks so much for stopping by.